The Xbox 360 is one of the most successful video game consoles of all time, solidifying Microsoft as a competitor against Sony and Nintendo. Throughout its 10 year lifespan, the Xbox 360 saw numerous iterations and revisions that saw the hardware change considerably. From major design overhauls like the Xbox 360S and Xbox 360E, to the internal revisions made to the design of the console, we're going to cover all of that and more in today's video on how the Xbox 360 hardware changed over time. But before we begin, I think it's important to understand how Xbox 360 models are identified. You've got the names of the SKU models such as Core, Premium, S and E, but Xbox 360s are often referred to by their internal motherboard revision. This is important as two fat Xbox 360 models can look identical from the outside, but have some pretty major differences internally. For that purpose, I'll be referring to the different revisions with both their SKU model name and their motherboard revision. With that out of the way, let's begin. When the Xbox 360 launched back in 2005, there were two models available, the Core and the Premium model. These models were using the Xenon motherboard revision and had a few unique differences from later Xbox 360 models. For starters, they both lacked HDMI support. That's right, the Xbox 360 did not originally have HDMI support. Instead, your HD gameplay would all be done via component cables, which was only included with the premium model. In addition to this, the Xbox 360 did not originally have 1080p support either, maxing out at 1080i instead. Microsoft would later announce 1080p support for the Xbox 360 in late 2006, with the Xenons also getting support for it in a later update. The Xbox 360 only included a standard DVD player, meaning it could not play HD movies from a disc, though an add-on HD DVD player was released for the short-lived HD DVD format. Furthermore, unlike its competitors, the original Xbox 360 models also lacked Wi-Fi support, though a dongle was available for purchase should you require it. The Xbox 360 Premium model launched with a 20GB hard drive, while the Xbox 360 Core model came with no additional storage, but a hard drive or memory unit could be added at a later date. The Xbox 360 Premium came with a wireless Xbox 360 controller, whilst the Core model came with a wired controller, being the only SKU model to do so. From the outside, the Premium and the Core console look identical with the exception of the disc tray, where the Premium model has a chrome tray whilst the Core model has a white finish, a trait that would carry over to the later Pro and Arcade models. Finally, these models are also notorious for the Red Ring of Death issue, which in these models is often caused by the GPU die breaking away from the substrate, causing the GPU to fail. The next major hardware change came with the new SKU model, the Xbox 360 Elite, in May 2007. Not only did this model come with a new matte black finish, but it also came with a 120GB hard drive, which was larger than anything its competitors had to offer at the time. The Xbox 360 Elite came with the new Zephyr motherboard revision, which saw the Xenos GPU receive a die shrink from 90nm to 80nm, which for those of you who don't know, means that the GPU should draw less power, making it cooler and more efficient than your Xenon models. But the biggest change in hardware comes in the I.O. support. The Xbox 360 Elite was the first Xbox 360 model to come with a HDMI port, making it the definitive Xbox 360 model at that time. It is thought from July 2007 onwards that premium models started to use the new Zephyr motherboard, so these also gained the HDMI port. In late 2007, Microsoft replaced the Xbox 360 Core model with the Xbox 360 Arcade. These models came with a 256MB memory unit and a wireless controller, but crucially also came with the latest motherboard revision, the Falcon motherboard. This revision featured a dyed reduction for the Xenon CPU from 90nm down to 65nm, and also had reduced power draw, instead coming with a 175 watt power supply. It also came with a HDMI port, as all future Xbox 360 revisions and models would do from this point onwards. Xbox 360 Premium models from around this time would also gradually shift to the new Falcon motherboard as well. The Falcon motherboard revision also had a slightly altered version known as the Opus motherboard. This revision was used in the original Xenon repairs from around mid-2008, and is almost identical to the Falcon revision, but it lacks the HDMI port. 
If you've got your original Xbox 360 Xenon model repaired, it's highly possible you may have an Opus motherboard instead. This brings us to late 2008 when Microsoft replaced the Xbox 360 Premium model with the Pro model. The Pro model replaced the 20GB hard drive with a new 60GB hard drive and also started to arrive with the latest motherboard revision, the Jasper motherboard. This motherboard saw a further die reduction to the GPU, bringing it down from 80nm to 65nm, matching the 65nm Xenon CPU from previous models. It also saw a further reduction in power draw, coming with a 150 watt power supply. This would go on to be the final motherboard revision for the original Xbox 360 models, and is often regarded as one of the most reliable revisions of the Xbox 360. In mid-2010, Microsoft announced the first major overhaul for the Xbox 360, the Xbox 360S or Slim model. This model came with numerous changes to the design of the Xbox 360, sporting a brand new touch sensitive controls for the power button and disc tray, a new glossy black finish, built in Wi-Fi support, a larger 250GB hard drive, and support for digital optical audio. The CPU and GPU were combined to be on a single 45nm die, and power draw was further reduced to 133 watts. The Xbox 360S would also see the inclusion of a dedicated Kinect port, meaning no adapters would be required unlike the original Xbox 360 models. The original Xbox 360 Slim came in two variations, one with a 250GB hard drive and one with 4GB internal flash memory. Only the 4GB model came with flash memory built in. This made it unique since the one that came with a 250GB hard drive lacked any onboard memory. The new Slim models could not use the original Xbox 360 hard drives for obvious reasons, but with clever modifications there were ways around this. The Xbox 360S also dropped support for the Xbox 360's proprietary memory units, instead allowing users to save data to a USB memory stick. Later on, the Xbox 360S models would replace the glossy finish with a matte black finish, not unlike the Xbox 360 Elite model. This brings us to the second and final major hardware revision in 2013, known as the Xbox 360E model. This model replaces the touch sensitive buttons with physical buttons once more, removes one of the USB ports, and curiously, it removes the digital or optical audio port, requiring all surround sound to be connected via HDMI. The overall aesthetic of the Xbox 360e was made to be similar to that of the Xbox One, and the Xbox 360e model would also see a further reduction to power draw to 115 watts. So that's every major revision to the Xbox 360 hardware throughout its lifespan. I personally owned an original Xenon Premium model, which I went on to replace with the Xbox 360S, though I recently picked up another Xbox 360, which as it turns out, has a Falcon motherboard. What about you? Which Xbox 360 model do you own? Do you have a favourite model? Let me know down in the comments section below. But that's all from me. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more, and consider following me on Twitch. Thanks again, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.